Hi, everyone, and welcome again to my audiovisual channel. I am Gabriella Handel. I'm a draftsman and the host of, and also the host of the show, A Conversation About Art. During each episode, I look for the meaning of art and beauty through conversations with colleagues in different artistic fields. Today, I offer you episode 66, and I will talk with artist Dan Bunone. If you'd like to support this podcast, you can do so by liking and sharing this video and also by subscribing to my audiovisual channel. These are all immediate and at no additional cost to you. If you'd like to show your support with money, it's also very welcome and appreciated. You can do so by purchasing my drawings directly from my website, which is gabriellahandle.com, one word. You can purchase crafts I make from eBay, buy prints of my drawings, or leaving me a tip. Thank you for your time and attention in watching this episode, and do leave a comment so I know you watched. I hope you enjoy it. All right, Dan Bunone, thank you very much for agreeing to talk to me today. Uh, you're episode 66 of A Conversation About Art. Why don't you tell our future listeners and viewers who you are and what you do? Okay. Hey, how's it going? Yeah, thanks again for having me. Um, my name is Dan Bon, and yeah, I'm a painter. And yeah, I'm based in Brooklyn, New York, and kind of I'm an oil painter, and yeah, I'm doing my thing. Okay. Wait, um, but where did I get the Bonone from? I think oh, that's the email you gave me. Oh, yes. It confuses people so much that um, my um, I used to have my Instagram be Dan Bon one. And then my email was that also. <laughs> okay. Okay. And then I have a, one of my painter friends is named Lucas Bononi. Mm -hmm. And I think his name's like Italian. And so everyone like here's his and then they see mine and then they think it's Bonone or something, but it's just Bon. Okay. <laughs> all right. All right. Well, let me. <laughs> we You don't it's have to funny. start over. I think it's funny. <laughs> no, 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 no. I, I'm not. I'm not going to start over, but I do want to like, where did I even? Yeah. So it's just Bun, B-U-N-N? Yep. <laughs> okay. Okay, that's cool. Now, I just I just wanted to kind of consciously make a correction so that it's I remember. Yeah. When I'm like typing out the caption and and that, and that stuff. Okay. Uh, all right. So you said you're a painter. Yep. And uh, how long? It, it's how did you start painting? Oh my. Um. Like how long ago? And you know, because it's oil painting. Did you said it's oil painting? Yeah. Yeah. So um, yeah, so then when did you start any kind of artistic endeavor and then how did you end up specifically with oil painting? Yeah, totally. Um, so I think I first oil painted in about 2013. So I guess it's like 10 years ago. And I kind of have been on this road within that time of kind of like trying to develop some level of skill at oil painting. I think before that, I maybe did acrylic painting and just, you know, making things. So like, probably since I was a, since I was a little kid, I've always been making stuff. But I think, you know, I think for some people, they're like always drawing, like since they were a kid, they're always drawing. I, I think for me, it was more like I was doing like craft projects, or like sculpting little things, like maybe I had like access to like some sculpty clay. I was like making things out of that, or, you know, like playing with Legos and like, adding materials into it or something um, more in that way. And then you know, I, I would draw maybe like at school or like in if there was like an art class or something. And I think maybe by the time, maybe by the time I was like a teenager, I started like drawing for fun and just like doodling um, and kind of like one thing led to another and I ended up at figure drawing. And that kind of sent me on this path of like, whoa, I like really want to do this yeah is that kind of what you meant sure yeah but the only <laughs> thing is that the one thing like to another reminds me of the yada 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 where you kind of like <laughs> oh, i skip a bunch but, you of know stuff. You, you it's like it's like a i i i mean not i'm not like necessarily accusing you of skipping information but yeah but uh but but I'm, I'm definitely curious because it's like i mean you had it seems like you had the desire to just like make stuff for example yeah um so so what do you why did you want to make stuff oh example? well hmm it's like why did you want to make stuff and then why do you want to keep making stuff it's like why do you still want to make stuff 
Yeah, yeah. I think about that a lot actually because you know, when you're like when you're a kid, you don't you don't really know why you do it. You just kind of right. do it. It's like playing mm-hmm. with Legos or something or inventing some game with your siblings or friends or something. You're just mm-hmm. kind of doing it cuz it's fun. It's like you're playing. I think the older you get, the more kind of focused it becomes, or it becomes more of like a specific practice or something, or you're trying to like sell your painting, it kind of changes forms a little bit. So, you know, I think somewhere under there, there's just like an impulse to, I guess, have fun and (laughs) kind of, yeah, create something. I think it's, it's kind of like a base level human thing to want to like make something, you know, Mm -hmm. whether it's like, I don't know if this is related or not, but when I was a little kid, there was a stream and we would go in the stream and there was like clay in the side of the stream. So you could, it, it you know, it, you couldn't fire it or anything, but it was like just the clay soil. So we'd like grab a handful of clay and you want to start like smushing it around or something. I think it's, it's just like part of, yeah, 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 yeah. But some of it's more sticky, you know, like the different mm-hmm. soil contents, like there could be like clay. <laughs> um, and so I think there's something to that where it's like, it's just like a basic thing to want to make something. I think I think that it's really easy to lose that though and be like, I'm making a product, you know? Mm-hmm. So I, I think I've experienced that much more recently as 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 a as a the kind of practice of like making stuff has kind of turned into like, well, I'm trying to like do this with my life. It kind of becomes like, well, we're making a product we're gonna sell. So that's something that's been on my mind a lot. But the original impulse I think is more like the kid playing with Legos for me Mm -hmm. that makes any sense yeah yeah it does yeah um yeah because I think I've been because I also think about this relationship between these two things that you just mentioned of like doing something just because you of a whim yeah versus thinking of being an artist as work oh yeah and I mean I mean not, not that it's a negative thing because I have heard at least one person for sure, vehemently refusing to refer to the art that they were doing as work because they thought using the term work was denigrating because work (laughs) isn't supposed to be enjoyable or something, according to some definition he read somewhere. But I was like, you know, but at the end, I mean, I, I, I can kind of understand because, you know, the like the toil in quotes of like, oh, the nine to five and the cubicle job. It's like, that's kind of what somebody thinks of when we use the term work. So I can understand not wanting to associate doing, making art with that because of the negative connotations. But at the same time, it's like work is totally, work is also what enables a person to, you know, have a, have a a roof over their heads and get food Right. And just, you know, be comfortable and stuff. So at this at the same time, it's like being able to pair that with art. It's like, why not? You know? It's yeah, like yeah. so so like um and you know, being able to maintain the genuine like the legitimacy, the legitimate desire to make work with the administrative discipline of Oh, making money and organizing your stuff. It's like, yeah, yeah. that's difficult. It's not oh, impossible, yeah. but it's really difficult. And it's like, I'm trying to do, it's like, it's a long-term project, of course, but I'm, I'm personally trying to do something like that for, because, because I want to make, I, it's like, I want to make a living out of my, my own art, yeah. but I don't want to, I don't want to look for like a subject matter that is popular or something. And then I'm going to draw yeah. that. And then I'm going to sell so much, haha, <laughs> you know, like, I don't want that. I want to draw whatever the hell I want. Right. And then I want to sell it. It's like, that's what I want. Right. And so what, what do you think about that? Oh man, it's funny because like, I was like, I don't know what this conversation is going to be like. I was like, am I nervous or something? But I'm like, no, we're just going to go with the flow. But it's funny that this is like, we go straight to this topic because this is kind of what I've been thinking about. And kind of like mm-hmm. with me and my friends, kind of, we've been talking about this a lot of just like, how do you like do the thing you want to do and then kind of like make it happen. And so I definitely don't have the answer for it. But yeah, I think what you're saying, I think there's something to what you're saying. And I also think like, um, I think there's something in kind of like fine art that one of my old teachers um, talked about. His, his name is Robert Hunt. He's a, a really amazing illustrator and oil painter. And he he used to talk about like this idea of like Van Gogh as like an artist where he, he just kind of was on his 
I think my understanding of the idea is like he's on his personal quest kind of and he just made the things that he made because he was interested in them in them and people resonated with it and he's obviously maybe like some level of outlier or, you know whether people like his work or not it's definitely resonated with the large part of the world for a variety of reasons but um uh I think the idea though that, that I'm trying to say is like there's some level of like inherent like purity to the to the thought that he's just like out there in this field making his sketch because that's the thing that he wants to sketch and i think that it can also there's another aspect of kind of like commercialism where it's like well i'm the person that makes sketches in the field so i'm going to go to the field and sketch in the field mm -hmm. do, do you see the difference between those two it's like sort of sure yeah and so yes yeah, so i have definitely been thinking about that um that's maybe less of like an origin story is just like where I am right now. But um, yeah, I don't have the answer though. Hmm. Yeah, no, I mean, it's, it's definitely difficult because um, I, I think I can say that I know personally, at least one person, one artist mm -hmm. who got into a gallery and their work was just selling. Right. And it's, it's like, it's like, that's kind of a, not, not exactly pigeonhole, but just, I don't know. I kind of think of it as a trap. And I think sometimes it's referred to as a trap, you know, like in the art world. Oh. Um, at least in art school anyway, when you're talking about legitimacy of like the sincerity of some work that a gallery or maybe not even with a gallery, you just, you're just on Instagram and you're, you happen to be posting a lot of paintings of a certain subject. Right. And it's very well liked. And then in a way, it's a risk if you change the subject matter because you just want to draw or paint something else. Because right. obviously, if if something is reliably selling, it's like you're painting Nautilus shells, for example. Yes. Yeah. And it's like you're painting them in all the angles and it's like you have so many paintings of them and they're all selling and stuff. But then one day you're like, I'm just tired of the Nautilus shells. I want to paint starfish now. Yeah. So it's like, it's obviously a risk that the starfish it's like you know say that you one day you post ah, you know what i'm kind of i'm kind of into starfish now and then nobody pays attention to your post or like the gallerist is like no that's not it's not what it has been selling don't do right. that painting you know so like um sometimes and i you know as much as i obviously think it's cool that this individual whomever they are when it happens yeah. was able to find like that degree of success yeah. with their work with something they wanted to do it sucks when when the person might feel like they then can't do what they want with that creative impetus because of some uh like commercial tech you know that's when it becomes too much work and not enough whim you know yeah yeah and i think that's where it's like I think it's, it's like you want to like hold on to or at least like I want to hold on to like some of this sort of like childlike almost like naive interest where you don't have to necessarily think about why you're interested in it you just know that you are interested in it mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and um as far as that goes I think some of my favorite artists kind of uh like cast a, a wide enough or like flexible enough like net for like their thing that that hopefully they don't encounter that too much you know um, cause I, I think there's something sort of like very like literal of, uh, and probably limiting of like, like I'm the Nautilus shell guy, like you're saying or something or, or whatever the thing is. But, um, but at the same time, it's like Nautilus shells are super interesting. So if, if you become yeah. interested in them, you should be able to do that. And even if, even if you were normally doing something else, you know? Yeah. I think, yeah. There's yeah, actually, and you know. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Sorry, sorry. No, no, go ahead. Oh, I was gonna say one of my favorite artists is this guy James Jean. Have, do you know him? I know of him. Yeah. Okay. Some people might like him. Some people might not. But I really, sure. I really think his work's amazing. Um, he's definitely super famous, so maybe it's easy to like his work. But um, one thing I was just looking at his like website the other night, and I was like, holy shit! Like this guy does whatever he wants because he's kind of st been trained to some degree in like, like. Uh, technique based painting but then he also has this whole like illustrative thing and like if you just look at his portfolio it's like a lot of different types of things and I'm like I think that's cool maybe that wouldn't work for everyone because you know you have to it's a whole other thing about like how to pull that off but just the idea of it it just looked to me when I when I was kind of reviewing it I was like 
this guy just does what he's curious about. Like he was curious about mm-hmm. this. He did the painting. He was curious about this. He did the painting. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. You know, I was, cause I was also thinking that, you know, like you, and, and what specifically remind me, reminded me of, of this is what you said about the Nautilus shells. They're interesting, right? Yeah. So it's like, there's also, of course, the case of the person who just starts on a subject matter. Yeah. And seems to be able to go go on on the subject matter just indefinitely and it's like at right. this, you know and I mean, this isn't entirely related to what we started talking about but at the same time it's like how can one tell the difference between the person who is making work because they're kind of stuck in quotes selling work that sells versus the person that is making the same subject matter because they actually still like it you know right because, right so so then that seems like an interesting like you know how how does one even divine that difference if you have the two beside you know besides the, uh one beside the other you know yeah i mean i i guess at some level i think if someone was like if someone's excited about something you're going to see it in the painting if mm-hmm. they're not excited about it they're probably going to like quit at some point right like mm-hmm. i feel like it would be hard to like if you to like really not like what you're doing and keep doing it because it's like there's other things that would be easier to do so i feel like i feel like it kind of answers itself it's at some point yeah yeah yeah. i would like to think but i I mean who knows i i like it would be kind of sad if someone was like felt like trapped in their subject matter and like couldn't get out of it but i feel like it's almost it's like such a it's like such a um uh like internal part of the experience of like painters where like I think if you're telling someone like oh I want to be a painter like the first thing they'll say is like oh well you should paint this because like people would love that mm-hmm. I think it's something so maybe for for people who aren't doing this maybe they might not think of this issue at first but I think for people doing it I think it's like a huge question of like well what am I going to paint anyway yeah 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 okay um all right so why do you still paint? Why do I still paint? Um, I think I think because it's fun for me. I I think I like the kind of like getting lost in the in the project type of thing, where like I'm like sitting there and I'm like, well, like how am I going to pull this off? Like, let's say I, I've been painting some skulls lately, and I guess I think skulls are interesting. So I'm sitting I'm sitting there like, how do I how do I get the skull into the painting? And it's fun for me to sit there and figure that out for hours and hours. You know, I think if it was if it was too easy, I don't think I would like it as much. Mm-hmm. Maybe I think you know I think it's I think if you're doing especially because we're probably talking because about some level of like realism or like representational sure. painting or figurative painting or something. I think people that do that like like want to solve the puzzle. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I think there's an element of that for me anyway. Yes, I I liked just now that you were that you said um you were trying to figure out how you're going to get this skull into the painting because yeah. like or, or just like trying to figure it out because um I haven't drawn a skull in a little while but for uh not not that long ago I was drawing a bunch of skulls because oh, yeah. I, I had like I had like a side project and every time I was like how am I going to do this oh yeah because <laughs> yeah. and I mean and I mean th- that happens basically every time that I started drawing it's like I mean how do I start yeah. And it's like, I've drawn, you know, I've drawn skulls a bunch of times. I've drawn the figure a bunch of times. I love drawing portraits. I've done them a bunch of times of different, you know, but, but at this, it, it, it's like that, that feeling at the beginning is like always, and it's like, even after I've started, I'm the, um, the stuff that I really enjoy that I'm really familiar, that I'm already super familiar with, like in the portrait, for example, which is, I think, um, I, maybe I consider myself the most familiar with that. I'm like, yeah, what is this like? eye socket to zygomatic to like it's like again and again and it's like I don't get it right and I, yeah and I love like tracing that path and finding it and it's like yeah nasolabial fold and it's like what it's like I don't get it so I have to do it again and again in every portrait you know yeah, totally. and it's like you know I can t- I can t- like tell you what they're called and like maybe a bit of what's underneath and stuff but it's like I'm not sure that strictly means I get it necessarily, you know? Yeah. Um, and I think that's one of the cool things about that subject of whether 
the figure or nature, just like, you know, landscapes or whatever, or flowers, I don't know, mm -hmm. um, is that it never ends. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. So one thing I was thinking about lately with the skull, but you could apply it to other stuff. Like you could take a hand and, and you could say, okay, am I doing a study of a hand because I want to like learn hand anatomy or am I doing a study of the hand because like I'm drawing like, you know, um, like my grandma's, my grandma's hand or like, am I, I'm drawing like an angry hand or something. So I think of like Rodin or something. Um, like it's more expressive. And so uh, I, the thing it's making me think right now is like, maybe you don't need to know like exactly how it works. You just need to kind of do it. Cause, cause like with the skulls, it's like, there's a lot of, I'll see a lot of sketches that people will do that are like a study of a skull. And it's like, they're trying to understand skull structure so they can do a portrait or something. And like, that's awesome. There's totally a place for that. I've definitely done that. Or like, I want to learn how to draw proportions or something. And, but then I, I also feel like there's like, I'm drawing like the skull and the witch's cabin or something. And those two drawings I think are going to look different because of the um, kind of like intention behind it. And it's like the, the study, maybe like the study of the person who's like drawing three angles of the skull is like, like expertly executed um but um it's like it doesn't i don't know how to put it it's like it doesn't look like it's about to bite you or something mm -hmm. but like the skull in the witch's cabin it looks like it's about to bite you mm -hmm. do, do you know what i mean sure maybe yeah I, I i don't totally have the answer with that but i, I just think they're the kind of the intentionality behind it i think is different where like on one hand i'm like yeah like i want to understand like how does the skull sit under the face but i also want to like draw the skull on the witch's cabin mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and and i think if you yeah. i think maybe you don't need to know necessarily everything to do the second one sure no that's true that's true for sure um yes yes i agree with that because i guess it depends on the goal of the image that you're making mm -hmm. yeah but um, i mean i could I also guess... just be like oh go ahead go ahead yeah no i mean i guess at first you were saying that that maybe that strictly doesn't matter but i think but I think it's at least helpful to decide what is like the path that you're going to take with the drawing, because it's like, if you're trying to yes. understand the skull, then you're probably going to end up drawing a bunch of skull detail and like where the yes. skull is doesn't matter. But then right. if you want to draw the skull in the witch's cabinet, then you obviously need to convey lots of other information that have nothing to do with the skull. So it's like, you can't get lost in the weeds of skull anatomy. Or, I mean, you can, right. of course, yeah. but then, you know, the drawing the painting or whatever might take like a million years or it might right. it, or it might not be like atmospheric or stuff because it's only going to be skull you know what i'm saying so like yeah, i guess i, I guess it kind of depends on the on the intent and the desire of the person um yeah but f for me for sure i just like generally will will be just like what is this shape and what is this called what do yeah. the doctors call this and yeah, why definitely. You yeah know? yeah yeah um well because, it helps that a lot of times it makes sense yeah i like, mean it's yeah yeah the you mean the names yeah like they've named yeah. it that for a reason so yeah yeah exactly and it's helpful to remember like the shape of something and yeah. the the placement like where it's where it is in, in the body and stuff and it's yeah. just you know i think part of the reason for which i never get it is because just like the human it, it's like the skull is and really the musculature as well and really the whole body <laughs> yeah it's like it is so weird it's like i don't understand i don't really understand why we're like oh aliens and machines when it's like have you seen the body it's fucking right, yeah. crazy <laughs> are oh, you yeah. kidding me have you seen the eye socket it's insane yeah have you yeah. seen have you seen the skull from underneath without the jaw it's fucking crazy it's yeah, ridiculous yeah, yeah. And, okay um all right see that's why i draw the skulls and the portrait <laughs> okay yeah um <laughs> All right, so um, Mr. Bunn. Yeah. What is art in your opinion? What is art? Oh no. Um, what is we art? We got here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, 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 it's uh, what is art? I mean, hey, I guess it's. <laughs> 
I guess uh, easy answer would be it could be something beautiful. It could be something that's like done in a beautiful way. It could be something that like draws your attention or kind of like draws attraction. Um, it could be like a physical item. It could be a sound. It could be something you see in nature. It could be all sorts of things. Um, Mm-hmm. Um, I'm like it could be an import export it could be an import export commodity that was what I thought of earlier because I, I thought I knew you were going to ask me this and I was like what would be the most annoying answer I could say and I was mm-hmm. like it's an import export commodity <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> which isn't really what I think art is but I think it is what art can feel like it, just like an, an exchange commodity. commodity or uh, uh, an exchangeable commodity mm-hmm I mean, is that bad? No, <laughs> it's not, but it might, but it might go against the kind of naive thing I'm trying to hold on to of like the childlike just creation thing to be mm-hmm. like, darn it, it's, it's just a commodity. I'm going to sell this. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but okay. What is art in general? I think it just, um, you know, in your opinion, my opinion, it's like, what is it that you're doing when you're painting? Oh my, is it art? Well, well, no, no, I'm not. No, the question isn't whether if when you're painting, you're making art. What what I want to know is why is it that when you're painting, you're making art? Because I mean, I have no doubt that it's art. It's like I'm saying that it is art, but I don't understand why. Because like, that's kind of that's kind of how I feel when I'm drawing. I'm like, you know, if I look at my drawings, I'm like, yeah, that's I mean, you know, in my opinion, those are art, but I don't understand. I don't really know why. Hmm. You know, what about this maybe it's something that's done with attention and intention hmm. like you could could you like like could, could you like tie your shoes in an artful way it would be like if you paid a lot of like think of like um like a i don't know like lacing up i don't know like maybe like a i don't know like a ballerina lacing up their shoes or something maybe it could hmm. be done in an artful way because it's like done with so much intention maybe that's kind of a broad net but <laughs> Um, I mean, there's like the literal thing of like humanity has decided that painting sculptures and music and dance are art. So if you're engaging in one of those activities, you're doing art. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. That was multiple answers, but no, 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 that, that's cool. I mean, it's a conversation about the subject. Yeah. Um, but okay. So when somebody engages in any of these activities that you just listed like dancing yeah uh, i forgot which ones i mean obviously drawing or painting and painting singing, or poetry this type this type of yeah, stuff. yeah yeah um but i mean that is in conjunction with what you said at first with the intention and attention because it can't just be because for example if i stand up and start like twitching Right. It's like I can't be like I'm dancing right now. Or I mean I could and be like it's modern dance or something really stupid like that. Yeah. Um but and get away with something but but it's like there's no there's no way that is a fair comparison with ballet a ballet dance or mm. you know a waltz for example or like a tango. You know like there's no way just standing here twitching with no sound. Right, right, me, right. You know, unless I'm a postmodernist moron person. And so it's like, so, so it's like, there's obviously a difference between those two. And I think the difference is what you were saying at first about the, uh, you said attention and intention. Is that? Yeah. 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 Well, I think that kind of speaks to the idea of like, are there like forms or like traditions that you can participate in? Like, like we've like, um, like say that we've like, like humanity has like created some sort of tradition practice that has a tradition and a history and qualities that um, qualities that demonstrate kind of adherence or like failure in that tradition could could make it like an art in the in the sense that you're talking about mm-hmm. like um yeah, yeah. um well i guess that that would raise the question of like are there like measurable qualities that would kind of make something art versus like i, I was thinking versus like a let's say like a bird making a nest like somehow it knows how to make this like beautiful nest Mm. um but would you call that would you call that like nature or like evolution or would you call that art 
like if a human made that made that and made like like wove a basket you might say there's some sort of craft or art to that Mm -hmm. but then if the bird does it then we'll say it's like the mystery of nature so maybe there's something also like human about it Mm -hmm. yeah I don't know what do you think Does, does art have to be a human product well there are people who argue and are able to pose a handful of examples of animals that do that do things as part of a mating ritual that that easily would look like art to us oh like the bird dances <laughs> uh yeah the bird death dances but i mean more uh animals actually making something to attract wow. a mate wow so like there's there's a fish i think it's a puffer fish that makes a mandala in the in the sand oh my for example and there's like some bird that builds like a like a glamping nest whoa Kind of in a way. It's not glam. I'm just using the word because it's like a fancy as shit nest. Yeah. And so then the the female that they're trying to attract like looks at the nests and then she somehow judges which one is best and then that's the guy that that the guy bird that she chooses. Oh my god, so that's like, the one with like and, the tubes, right? They make like a almost like a tube of uh, like twigs. It might not be. I don't know. <laughs> there's more stuff involved. I don't quite remember, but there's more than one animal for sure. Yeah. That that has things that if it wasn't because we can see that an animal made it would be like who the shit made that it's amazing and it's art you know right um so so i um you know i'm reading a book called the art instinct by dennis dutton okay and he argues that both art and beauty is not just cross-cultural but cross species as well whoa and because because like for example even with the example of the nest for example like if you're thinking about a a friggin new york pigeon making a nest okay yeah like the most maybe most removed from art if you know you could argue maybe but at the same time it's like you can't just pick up any twig to make a nest all right you have to it's like the it's like i mean i don't know how to make a nest Right. I don't know how to make a nest out, nest out of twigs. Are you kidding me? It's like, where do you put it? How do you make them stack? I don't know. So right. it's like, not only does the pigeon have to know how to do that, but then each twig that she picks has to work for the nest. So it's like, there is some kind of judgment involved there because you obviously can't pick just any twig. Right, yeah, yeah. You know? Even um, like pigeons flying. Like, have you ever just watched them? Like, if there's like a crowded street with like cars and traffic and everyone's like getting off the subway and this like pigeon will just like like yeah been out of nowhere and like somehow not hit anyone yes i'm like skills <laughs> yeah no really i mean it's like i mean i definitely think there's something there because it's like the the pigeon building a nest has both intention and attention like you like you were the two because i mean yeah. i think i think those yeah. are important characteristics of art for sure because it's like that's what different because like that is part at least of what ranks art from good from from not just from not just discerning what is or isn't art but also what is good and then just starts to get shitty and bad art you know right that is what that is what that is what is able to tell a person when something is well made and with um, I guess I, I wonder what I could say for the intent part, but something that is well made and that the person enjoyed making it and that it was important to them and that they were trying to say something important with the work, you know, like maybe something like that for intention, you know, what, what mm. do you think? Yeah, I mean, I think it makes sense. I, I, my question is kind of like, um, what, like kind of like what makes an artwork good kind of is like, is it good because it's like amazing that someone made it or is it good for like some other quality? Like, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, because I I guess it makes me think of some like realistic art. Like if you show it to someone, they're like, wow, that's amazing that you did that. And, or like, it's amazing that someone could do that. And then maybe there's other art where you're like, well, I just like something about it. And like, I don't, like sure there's like amazing aspects or like it's well crafted but like 
I somehow like like the colors or the mood of it or something. But yeah, so I, I've kind of been thinking about that a little bit of just like, like, is it good because it's like amazing or is it good because it's like, I don't know, has like communicate something, you know? Do you, I don't know if that's answering your question, but yeah. um, it's kind of a <laughs> return question of just like, yeah, like what part actually makes it good? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, I agree. I agree. And um yeah i guess i guess if it's difficult to answer the question of what is art then maybe what is good art is even more difficult <laughs> oh because because then it's like two layers of difficulty because it's like did you even define what art is when you get to the point of what is good art you know oh yeah um so it's like um but you know also that's something else that's mentioned i mean i haven't been very consistently reading the art instinct because I'm like a fourth of the way in over months. But anyway, right. um, he says in the book that, I mean, so far it's like a quarter of the book in, he hasn't really defined what art is, <laughs> Yeah. but um, he has listed, he lists like characteristics of art. And he also argues that the argument of whether things that are in the extremes of what art is or can be, like if you're talking about the fountain or like, you know, yeah. just trash like that. Oh. Um, it's like, he said that that discussion isn't, I mean, according to him, is it's not helpful and it's more helpful to focus on the things that obviously are art. Like, mm. uh, you know, surgeons' paintings and and, you know, like, michelangelo's work yeah his apple his sculptures and this type of stuff that for whatever reason is obviously art but we know that it's art and it, it doesn't have us asking whether it is or isn't or it's like oh is this trying to get away with something it's like what is it trying to tell me you know like yeah this, this type of stuff so it's like yeah what do you think I, about that? well you know I've, I've definitely found myself in a in situations or like honestly in like a class before where we were kind of having some of these discussions like what is art and or or um even looking at like really weird art and i think i ended i would there was kind of pulling in more like experimental definitions or there's this there's like a video artist from china named chow fei that i remember actually really liking she made these kind of like performance art videos where there was like a dance piece that was like inside like this like giant factory in China. And there were, it was some sort of video piece with like the workers like doing some sort of dance within it. And so it was definitely like experimental art. But I remember like the stuff that we were talking about was like, well, does this qualify as art or that? Or like, how do we ex reinterpret the definition of art? And like, I was like, okay, this is kind of interesting. Like I can find something like engaging about that like video artist that I was talking about but at the same time like I just wanted to be doing figure drawing so like there mm -hmm. would be a certain point where I kind of like max out on the discussion where I'm like where I, was, I guess I kind of felt like well if you guys want to sit here and talk all day that's fine but like I really want to go work on my drawing if, if that makes any sense so um sure. I think sometimes the like what is art discussion um it just goes in like this big circle where um you end up just with people who want to talk rather than with people who want to draw them. And I'm mm -hmm. like, I'm totally happy to talk or like do this conversation. I think it's fun. Obviously I'm always listening to podcasts and shit, but at the same time, um, I just want to work on my drawing sometimes also. Sure. Yeah, no, no. So I mean, I completely, so, so, uh, yeah, ahead, sometimes sorry, that discussion, so, well, sorry. So, sometimes that discussion just leads me back to like, can I just like be drawing now? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, for sure. It's like, it reminds me of, um, you know, like when I was in school, there would be like, the lectures about galleries and whatever it is and it's like all right but what if, and you know they're talking when when somebody talks about the business side of art it's like okay yeah. but what about the studio time it's like when do i get oh, back yeah. to drawing you know yeah, yeah it does remind it does remind me of that i guess i guess for me personally the whole thing about trying to find a definition of art or really just try to understand better what it is even yeah um, it's really for me it's more about just trying to pin it down a little bit because 
especially because it's so in fashion right now to use words however the hell you want for right not you just like in general you you know you can just use terms arbitrarily just because they sound cool or because they sound meaningful and stuff but the but the the def the the but the person is obviously using the term incorrectly mm. because the definition is so diaphanous and they're completely ignoring the definition so it's like yeah um for me and it's also part about it, it's it's in part also about that um yes because it's like yeah i guess i don't want to use examples because i don't want to bring that subject into the into the conversation but 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 yeah so then so then in that case let's let's for a little while longer like um just assume i guess or, or go ahead with the idea that we all right we know what art is and what do you think or what does the art that you like that you consider good mm -hmm. what does it contain it's like, know. what are the characteristics of the art that you really like, that you think is really good? Oh, my. Um, I think, well, I, I, I like a, I like a lot of different stuff, but I think sure. if, I, if I'm like trying to find, like, kind of the core aspects, I tend to like stuff that has, like, a sense of mystery. And so it could be, like, like how did they do that like some sort of like mystery in that sense or uh, something that's maybe like unexplained that I have to like figure out a little bit while looking at it um yeah um I tend to I tend to like sort of technical things um so you know um whether it's like it, it doesn't necessarily have to be that it's like super illusionistic and like a like Dutch golden age sense, but I I I tend to be attracted to things that I'm like this person like really went in here. It's like there's even if it's not complex, it's like some aspect of it is like um, well executed. I guess is tends uh, I, I tend to be attracted to stuff like that, or even like um, like I really like like metal work or like jewelry. So it could even be. It's, I guess it's not quite like visual art per se, but if some, but if someone had like a really well crafted ring, I would probably like that. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Is that sort of what you mean, or like more qualities of like specific things, or? No, I mean that. I think that's cool. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Okay. All right. So, Mr. Dan Bun, what is beauty in your opinion? what is beauty oh my um you, you I, know it might be similar to my definition of art it's i think it's like a um sort of the indescribable thing that somehow has a sense that you that you feel like a sense of attraction when you see it it could could be like just or generates interest something that generates interest in like a um like pleasing or pure way how about that mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah something that generates in inherent interest in a pleasing or pure way inherent interest yeah what does that mean? oh like it's um oh it just draws your attention something that draws your attention like inescapably draws your attention Okay. And then the other two things you said, uh, you said pure? And yeah, well, because I was like, as soon as I said that, I was like, well, something could be like really horrific and I'm, and it would draw your attention because it's horrific, but I maybe wouldn't say it's beautiful. So so I'd say maybe some level, if there's some level of like, um, I don't know, in some sort of like pure way or like not horrific way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it has, I think, I think beauty, there's something to do with like, like almost like magnetic attraction and beauty it doesn't necessarily mean to be in like a um like romantic sense or something but just um, something that draws your attention like um uh, like bees in their hive could be like beautiful like whoa they're all like cramming around there and they like built this whole structure like there's definitely some element of beauty in that where it's just like if you see it you want to kind of get a closer look of like whoa look at those bees you know 
Mm -hmm. yeah. It's kind of like the technical thing about art when when you look at a technically good painting and stuff. And oh, yeah. I'm like, well, how, how did they, they do, do that? that? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So then that also has... I think that also has like an element of what you said earlier about about attention and intention. Yeah. At least at least in the case of stuff that's man-made for example because I'm not entirely sure that could necessarily be associated with nature stuff. And I don't mm. mean the bees necessarily because you know they they have to have both intention and attention to get out a hive that works. Right, right. That can be able to store their little bugs and stuff, you know. But mm -hmm. but for example, I guess I'm not I'm not entirely sure. And I mean I obviously could be wrong. I'm just maybe I haven't just thought about it in a way that would fit that information. Mm -hmm. Like like you know, what a landscape or because I guess I guess the I guess both parts about intention and attention insinuate something about deliberate decision making Ooh. so so i so i'm not entirely sure that i strictly associate that with nature and the things that nature makes because like i mean i think it could be argued like for evolution and stuff it's like these things resulted this way because they were selected for and uh, evolution and stuff but at the same time there is so much chaos and randomness involved in evolution in the evolutionary right. process and just in nature yeah. That I'm not entirely sure that any kind of deliberate intention, it's like, it makes no sense to me that there's deliberate intention there. It's like the chaos just happens to result sometimes, or at least more often in something that worked, but a lot of times it also results in stuff that just does not fucking work, <laughs> you know? Yeah, and sometimes, yeah. sometimes for whatever reason, that trait gets uh, perpetuated anyway, even mm -hmm. though it didn't, you know, it's like, it's like, that aspect of chaos has to be part of because you know nature because it's like i feel like otherwise it's insinuated that nature is sentient and i'm not and i'm not entirely sure that's the case hmm. because well yeah because because this is like that sentience i feel would make nature like an actual god and it's like i mean i think it'd be really cool obviously Mm -hmm. And I often think that if I was to worship anything, I would worship nature for sure. And I mean, I kind of do in a way. Yeah. Um. But, but it's like, it's that chaos. It's like that chaos that just sometimes results in something. It's like that why, that is why earth is here. And that is why we have not found anything like it anywhere else. Not yet. You right. Know? I do right. think there is something of the sort. Do you, I mean, do you, I mean, uh, what do you think about that? Uh, I'm like, do I need to resolve my art definition? <laughs> but um, <laughs> but um, I'm thinking of like a tornado and I'm thinking of a thunderstorm as mm -hmm. things that are like pure, kind of pure chaos that we could like explain with like a scientific definition. But I wouldn't necess necessarily say they're art, but I would probably say there's a beautiful aspect of them. Mm -hmm. Even though like in the case of the tornado, it might be very destructive, but I would still say there's something beautiful about like this, I haven't seen a tornado in real life, but just, just, just this like gust, like spinning through, that's going to like, just like super powerful force of nature. I would say there's something beautiful about that. So I guess um, if art is somehow intentional or like humanistic, maybe beauty goes even beyond that to include um, like incomprehensible phenomena that we just, we can try to get our minds around, but maybe still can't fully grasp as try as we might. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I might say beauty is larger than art. Oh, sure. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So do you, do you make your work with the intention of the work being beautiful and like the way in, in the way, you know, you know, the way that you define beauty, the, in, in the way that, what beauty is in your opinion um probably i probably probably don't i like maybe i kind of hope that it would be beautiful but i'm not like setting out to try to make it beautiful but i'm kind of hoping that it would be if that makes mm -hmm. sense yeah okay yeah what why would you say that you're not setting out to do that um 
uh, I guess that kind of gets to the question of like, is there like a recipe for beauty? Cause I'm like, I kind of wonder if there's some stuff that's like just beyond reach a little bit. And so that, yeah, if you like tried to grab it, it might kind of slip through your fingers no matter how hard you tried. But if you just kind of like, um, maybe focus on other things, you could hope that it kind of creeps up, creeps in there, if that makes any sense. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, so I, I, yeah, that's my, that's my answer for now. <laughs> okay. Yes. Okay. So uh, yeah, well, just to rephrase, I think, I think the, I think if you, if you set out to try to make something beautiful, it may or may not happen, but I think if you kind of, um, find something that you're like attracted to in terms of like a thing you're going to paint maybe, and then you just try to faithfully paint that as well as you can, if you're lucky, the beauty will kind of sneak in there without you having to like wrangle it. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm, yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I think that's my goal or hope. Mm -hmm. And you might you might not get it in every painting, but you could, if you're lucky enough, you'll get it every now and then. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, um, I like that as the final thing with which to close start closing out the episode. Okay, um, Dan, because we've made it to the fifty minute mark of the fifty minutes. Yeah. Well. So why don't you tell our future listeners and viewers where your work can be found? What are you working on lately? Is there anything you want to add? Do you have any projects coming up that you're excited about? Any Anything of this sort? Yeah, yeah, totally. Cool. Um, yeah, so I'm kind of just, I'm in my workspace studio right now. And yeah, I'm just kind of chipping away at some paintings. I've got a couple behind me that I'm working on and kind of trying to put the finishing details on. Um, you can find me on Instagram at Dan Bon Art. And I'm going to be teaching a workshop next month, actually, in LA at this place called Klein Academy. And I'm going to be teaching Moody Still Life. So we're going to be talking about like, how can you kind of create a setup and how would you go about painting that? So kind of some of the things I'm talking about, about, you know, like, what do you find interesting or kind of what attracts your attention? How can you kind of turn that into a painting setup? And then what kind of processes could you go through to bring it to life? That's sort of my thing I've been thinking about now. And so I'm going to be doing my best to share that with everyone out at Klein Academy. So if anyone's interested, you could check that out. And yeah, I'm just posting updates on Instagram and yeah. Okay. Out here doing my thing as best I can. That sounds excellent. Well, all right. Thank you very much, everyone, for watching and listening. Special thanks to my guest, Dan, for agreeing to talk to me and for his time. If you'd like to support Dan, my podcast, myself, or all three, all corresponding links will be in the caption. Make sure you like this video and leave a comment so we know you, you saw this episode. Also remember to subscribe to my audiovisual channel. So thanks, everyone. See you next time. Bye. Thank you.